Hi all, this is Rob from Ruinworks, just coming back with our latest release. It is one of the town scenes, um, it is called Black Rat Hall, and it depicts a thieves guild. I'm going to run through this again like I've done in my last couple of videos, just show you some of the highlights of what the scene is, what you can do with it, and a bit of how it works. So as you can see, up in the top right here, I have my levels UI open. Um, there's five total levels that have been built into the scene. Rooftops, third floor, second floor, ground, and cellars. If I zoom out a bit, you can see all the different options I have in the margins here. So I think the easiest way to do this is just going level by level, showing you all of the rooms with special active tiles in them. I'll just note again, as usual, if you select the ground level, you can find the journal notes up in the top right corner. There's a lot of rooms in this building. I got to what, 26, 27, 28, 29 different locations that I've defined. So without further ado, I'll take us down to the cellars, show us the first thing. So down in the cellars of the guild hall, I thought it'd be cool if they had a poison brewers where someone is brewing poisons for the guild or maybe alchemist's fire, anything that, you know, might be slightly illicit and needs some sort of special place to brew. It is here. I also have this vapor trap, which will just reveal vapor poison in this room the idea being that whoever is brewing the poison if he gets attacked or ambushed or whatever he would dump some poison on the fire and it would turn into vapor being the po poison maker himself he's probably already wearing protective gear maybe a gas mask to use this three stages zero is essentially just the reset the image you see right here if you hit one you can hear a sound effect play and then this sort of area of gas show up hit two the gas expands and three expands even further. The ladders here in the basement are equipped with interaction points. So any token that double clicks on them will be elevated into the next level, which is the ground floor. Okay, starting on the ground floor, uh, there's a few items here. Starting here at the top room between these rooms labeled E and F, there is this double fireplace, which also acts as a rotating fireplace. To activate it, um, all you need to do is go up into the top margin. You see a secret door rotating fireplace rotate 90 degrees just click on that and the sound will play and the fireplace will rotate along with the walls so if I have a token selected on ground floor I can rotate it by 90 degrees and see the walls move and the image moves so that's just a neat little thing that uh, your players might be able to find in order to get into the card room. Two guard rooms here at H and I. The idea being here that they would guard these windows. So if anybody enters the alley, um, they could shoot at them with their crossbows. Here in H, you might be able to just barely see there is a trap door on the floor. So if anybody manages to find it, you can toggle the trap door and allow players to go into the basement this way. And you can just click the same button again to hide it once more. Um, here at active tile four is a barrel trap. You can see these barrels. This is an overhead tile so that players can understand that there's a walkway above them as they're walking into the alley. So these barrels can be loosened and dumped onto the players below. You simply click the barrel trap button, which is this barrel over on the left margin. Click it. The noise plays and the barrels are now dumped onto the main floor. I imagine these barrels might knock players prone as opposed to doing a lot of damage and also turn this area into hard terrain to cross. A lot of the traps in here aren't actually aimed to kill people. Some are, but not all of them. Um, more for delay um, to allow the thieves to get away if necessary. Um, another little cool item here. We have an interaction point in this room L at the bottom. Close this interaction point. It'll ask if they want to pull on the rope. I'm just gonna say no for now and I'll explain to you what that does. Pulling on this rope um, is connected to these other ropes that are overhead tiles that lead to bells in these two other rooms. Well, normally there would be a lookout in this room and if he sees anyone entering, he would pull on this rope to ring the bells and warn the guards in these two, ro in these two rooms. PCs can also activate this and I'll demonstrate it now. Um, what it does is when they do pull on the cord, it will activate for a short time the ambient sounds that are in both of these rooms. So right now if I click on this character, he doesn't hear anything. Double click on the interaction point, say yes to pull the rope. And now when you click on this guy, you can hear the bell being rung. And then after a short time, it stops. So that would be essentially the alarm for whoever might be in this room to open their curtain and prepare a crossbow. Might be a good time to mention that all the doors and curtains in Black Rat Hall 
function. So if you just click on the secret doors of the curtains, a sound plays and the curtain image will change. If you just activate a regular door, the door opens, now the image will change. Okay, another thing to note on the first floor in room J, this looks like a regular bunk room. However, uh, there is a secret passage through the chimney up to the second floor. The way I've done this is there is an overhead tile covering up the inside of the chimney. Once a character steps close enough, the overhead tile will disappear and they'll see an interaction point which they can double click to get, get up to the second floor. If players are just freely walking around the room, they will eventually notice that this fireplace has a ladder in it. So what I've done is I've put a secret invisible wall in front of the uh, fireplace so you can control when the PCs actually get to see the interaction point to climb up to the second floor. So to allow PCs to go through, you can just open the door and now they can get in and double click on the interaction point. They can say yes, then they climb the ladder and they're up the stairs on now on the second floor. Onto the second floor. We'll start at the top up here. There is a secret door here. You can just open it for them. The painting comes off the wall and they can enter. You might be wondering, well then, what the hell is this door for up here at the top of the room? This is meant to be a false door. If it is opened, and there's a crossbow bolt trap on the other side. That There's an interaction point in the bottom of this room. This is the mechanism, reset mechanism, for the walkway trap that I'll go over on the third floor. Going up to the third floor, at the top here we have the vault, the false vault, and the walkway trap, which I alluded to earlier. What this does is if anybody walks up this walkway step and steps onto this hashed tile, the floor will fall away and the token that enters will um, be transported to elevation zero. And if you were to enter, The game paused and the GM has sent a message asking if you want to send the token down to ground level. The reason I send this message is to give the GM a chance to ask the player to roll a saving throw or otherwise defeat the trap. If he isn't able to, you can just click yes and then he's transported down to the bottom floor and you can apply damage as you see fit. There are on the third floor these rope bridges that swing between the buildings items 7a 7b and 7c these all come in two different variations so i'll just show you 7c if you look at the rope bridge button down at the bottom you can go intact or broken so right now you can see that they're intact and if i hit the broken button the image is changed to a broken version it would probably be in the thieves interest to cut these bridges if they are being chased up here in the top right we have the guild master's quarters this is where the the boss of the guild would live. A couple of things here to note. One, there is a wardrobe in the back of the wall that has a door on it, so you can open the door into the wardrobe and it will reveal another door behind it. It's just a secret exit onto the balcony in case the guild master needs to escape. Second thing in this room is this interaction point here. So when a PC double clicks on this interaction point, it will ask him if he wants to pull the rope. What this does is we'll swing this door here by active tile eight across the exit of this southern door, which is from the Guildmaster's office. He might use this if he's trying to get away from anybody again, just to slow them down, it will block off the door. So if I click yes now, a secret door closes um, and this door slides into place. These aren't the only tricks that the Guildmaster has. If you go now into his office, I imagine the Guildmaster sitting behind his desk here as he talks to PCs, maybe negotiates with them. And let's say things turn south, he has this nice little ballista here hidden in the secret room. I would imagine there's a lever underneath his table which he can pull to set off this ballista at whoever is standing in front of his desk. To do that, you would just go over to the right margin and you can trigger it, just press the play button. What this will do is open this secret door here, play a sound of the crossbow of the ballista firing and also shoot a bolt at the character there. Now if PCs are exploring this area you might want to make sure that you know where all the tokens are so that if another PC pulls the lever under the desk a, they might actually set off this trap to attack one of their own party members. So these are some of the main highlights of Black Rat Hall. Let me know what you think and I'll uh, see you next month.